Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, I'm Dodge, this is Big Mech's Workshop and Paint Studio, and this is the beginner series part 6. Now in this episode we're going to be talking about paints, pigments and colour theory. Before we finally get round to part 7, um, we're going to start working on a project which is to do with layering and uh, applying paint. So, firstly, as you can see behind me, we have a lot of brands of paint. Uh, Andy's desk has even more different brands of paint on as we've separated the uh, all the sets um, Now for any of these tutorials that we do or the beginner series or anything we work on uh, Do note that you can mix any of these paints with any other type of paint as long as they're both acrylic You don't want to mix them with enamel paints uh, that won't work It doesn't matter what brand if you've got some games workshop paint you can mix that with model colour by Vallejo or scale 75 or anything else they will all mix um, so when mixing colours don't worry about that you can just put anything with anything else now uh, mixing colours so where to start with this video uh, as this is based at beginners we're gonna have a quick look at colour theory um, which is I'm gonna keep it very basic um, it's, it's quite self-explanatory. Um, I will put a colour wheel up here so you can uh, see the colours. Uh, you've got your three primary colours. You've got your yellow, your blue and your red. And you can uh, mix any of those two together to make a secondary colour. So you end up with your orange, green and purple. And obviously again you can mix each of those that are next to each other to make a, another shade. Um, and the colour wheel just continually goes like this but what's important to know when trying to pick a colour scheme say for Space Marines because I think everyone who's ever started 40k at some point has tried to make, the, make their own Space Marine colour scheme is how the contrast here works anything opposing on the colour wheel will uh, contrast but uh, will also stand out quite a lot so you have your high contrast colours that will always stand out from each other. You have your red and your green, blue and orange, and yellow and purple. Uh, that's all your prime colours and they uh, will contrast very highly with the other paints that you use. Now this is why you'll often see a Blood Angels army with green eye lenses or a Blood Angels army on a forest style base because it contrasts well enough that you separate visually both parts of the model and um, you'll see that as well when it comes to Emperor's Children uh, bright purples and a yellowish gold maybe toned a little bit more orange around the trim uh, adds an, a nice contrast and of course then you've got your complementary colours on the colour wheel that are right next to each other so you've got your orange you've got your red, your orange um, yellows and those browns in between they'll all work really nice together for different shades and different tones and that's all i'm going to go into really with the uh, color theory as um, it's not going to be too important as a beginner at the moment we're really going to be focusing on the paint itself and the brands i'll also up here i'm going to put some visuals of these different paints so we've got games workshop which about 90% of you will definitely be familiar with as uh, that's what gets you into the hobby to start off with um, Now, Games Workshop paints they have sorted out their pigment over time now you'll notice different paints have different thicknesses the reason for this is the size of the pigment that's put in and how well ground it is so I'm going to pour some Games Workshop paint out onto a bit of paper and straight out the pot you can see how thick that's going to be obviously we're going to add water and a prime example of uh, the thickness of the pig pigment is if you take a games workshop metallic paint and then you water that down you can actually see once you water it down enough the bits of pigment floating around in it so each type of paint there is a, a limit to how far you can push it to get some decent coverage before it just becomes pigment so what you will learn over time just through using it a lot is the consistency you're going to need to get a decent coverage. Now that we've talked a little bit about the Games Workshop paints, we're going to talk about something that's actually quite a thicker paint, even though it's an airbrush paint. And at this point I'll also mention 
we use airbrush paints all the time for the paintbrush. There's nothing stopping you doing that. It just gives you a larger collection of paints to work with and different colors. So model color is actually quite thick for an airbrush paint, as I will show you. Um, but they do come in dropper bottles and the dropper bottles are awesome. Unlike Games Workshop paints, they uh, don't usually seal the self shut or get paint caught in the rim although on occasion um, the nib may come off and you'll end up pouring out more paint than you want to um, but by far we prefer drop of bottles in the studio it's just easier to get control because you only really need one drop of paint and then some water um, it also helps with measuring and so I've, I've heard of people taking all their games workshop paints and putting them in drop of bottles which is something you can do if you want to I would recommend it we just never have the time to do that so as model colors a much thicker paint it's just going to require more water but because it's got a uh, thicker pigment to it you will get a stronger coverage and uh, if you really water it down for glazing it's more likely to be patchy because of the pigment size and in contrast to that we've got scale 75 their range is designed for airbrushes but it's as far as i know it is our favorite for glazing because the pigment is it's so it's so fine and there is so much in there that um, you can really water that down and put a nice smooth coat of just residue that's left off your brush and build it up that way and it will give a good coverage there are also some other brands in between these we have the game color which is like a model color. It's the same sort of consistency, but the uh, colors tend to be much more like prime colors, much brighter, much stronger. And the Game Air, which again is another airbrush paint designed for airbrushing, but uh, it's almost the same as Games Workshop paint colors. So you can switch those out and they do come in dropper bottles already. And uh, they spread quite well. Now, I've, as you can see, there's even more paints on my shelf behind me. Uh, I'm not going to go through every single paint in this video, showing you the consistency of it. Um, really, what we're trying to, trying to point out here is the amount of water to paint ratio and the effects that will give. I mean, there's a whole heap more brands just on our shelves, but they just lie somewhere between scale 75 to the thickness of model color. So what we're trying to get at here is that each paint brand tends to have its own properties as well as games workshop having two different properties uh, they will have their layer paint and their base paint and there it says it shows you the same thing one of them slightly thicker goes on with a more strong pigment than the layer paint which is designed for glazing up we recommend that you do try all the paints uh, if given an opportunity you should always try some other paints uh, that's how we found that scale 75 were our favorites and ever since then we've been building up that collection just because it's our preference we are not going to be covering washers in this as the next video that comes out is going to be us starting a project at last i know it's been a step-by-step -step guide but we're really aiming this series of videos at complete beginners um, so we're trying to cover absolutely everything that we can um, it's quite difficult as we may overlook things because to us they're second nature so unfortunately that's all there is to this video, it is just a discussion on paints. I hope you've got some of your paints ready and your brushes and you've learned something from the rest of the series because in the next episode we're going to be finally painting something. I think we're going to be painting up some Tyranids, uh, not for any particular reason other than we have them lying around and they will make a good example. <clears throat> we're going to use some of this colour theory on them including the contrast and the complementary colours. We're going to learn how to do some... We're going to learn more about thinning the paints there and applying them, the base coats and the consistencies. So that will be the perfect time for us to show you um, all these different paint brands being placed on a model. So we have some thank yous to give out to our top paint patrons who help support this channel. They're one of the reasons we can buy these other brands of paint uh, to show you guys the consistency. And their support helps us make these uh, beginner series as well as get models in every month. So if you were... Uh, want to join them on patreon the links are in description every donation to this channel helps uh, we do love making videos for you and um, 
we appreciate every single donation it really does go a long way so a special thank you to these patrons the Ort boys matt ludwig hofbauer warren dwack kit linquist Akmus of dawn and mark you lot are awesome and we really thank you for your support if you want to get some supplies uh, as you're following this series along and you want to get them cheaper than your games workshop check out the outpost links in the description all brand new hobby gear at a second hand price so you'll always trump ebay on that as it's brand new and still out of the box quality um there are affiliate link so a big thank you to them and that's all from us for now and we'll see you next week and we finally get to paint something thanks for watching